turning over tables and calling for return to our lives upon the altar, the things we did at first. You're clearing out the temple, you're cleaning out the dirt, for we are your territory, and Lord, we are your church. Come on. We are your people, and you are our God. We are your temple, make us holy like you are.
right now we wanted to create some time in our service where we pray for you wherever you find yourself uh, in your context and whatever may be on your heart or you've maybe written down or sent to somebody we just wanted to pray and really invite God into your situation so uh, right now wherever you find yourself just create some moment of stillness you might be on the tube or the train or at home but we just want to stand with you in whatever uh, is going on in your life so Father God we thank you we come before you with all of our petitions, Father, all of our prayers, everything that's on our hearts. And in your reflection, Father, we just pray that all things will be well. Wherever you need to meet people, wherever they're seeking you, whether it's healing, Father, whether it's financial breakthrough, whether it's attention or a relationship that needs to be restored, Father, we present it before your feet. But Father, we just look to you, the hope of glory, Father. And we pray that you will shine your face on any situation no matter where people find themselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Well, welcome to online, welcome online. Uh, it's one of the Sundays where actually all the campuses are open. Everything is reopened. So even Southwest, Southwest, Southwest. first time Southwest. today. Shout out Southwest. Um, so if you find yourself a local to a Hillsong community near you, why don't you pop in? It'd be great to see you in real life. Online is amazing. It's done an amazing job, but it's always better when you're next to somebody. It's always better in the room, isn't it? Pete? In the room. Come see us in Kent. You're very welcome. Well, come to Central and see me if you really want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now we're going to come around our tithes and our offerings. I want to encourage you, church, with a verse from Proverbs. Uh, verses 10 and 11 it says this the name of the Lord is a fortified tower the righteous run to it and are safe the wealth of the rich is their fortified city they imagine it a wall too high to scale so the question I guess I want to ask you and I, I think I've been asking myself is where's my strong tower what do I put my trust in it says in that verse that the righteous they run to it and they are safe not just walk or treat it as a last resort, but they run to it. They run to the name of the Lord and they are safe. And I guess it's easy to compartmentalize that trust in our lives. It's easier to put some things before God, but maybe keep others back, especially in the times we find ourselves. But I wanna encourage you, church, in every area, to come before the Lord. Why? We can stand on his word, because we can be safe. We can put our full trust in him when it comes to every area, be it our time, our resource, or any other area of our life we can get that safety in his name. I'd love to pray for you as we come around this moment. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can stand on your word. We thank you that we can trust in you, that we can run to you and have that safety. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you take what we have and you use it to build your church, to further your kingdom here on earth in this wonderful nation, Lord Jesus. We just pray you take everything that's coming in, would you bless it, would you use it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, now we're going to come around the word. We're going to hear from Pastor Nicola. Well, I am excited to be speaking on the second Sunday of 2023. It is an amazing start to the new year, and I'm so glad that you can join us today. So if you're taking notes, why don't you get out the old-fashioned book and pen, or maybe on your iPhone. But the title of my message today is Staying on Track staying on track. I wonder if you've ever got lost before. I've had many opportunities to get lost because I'm terrible with directions, but I remember one distinct time I got lost. It was on a Duke of Edinburgh expedition. And during this time, um, you know, back when I was a teenager, my parents, my teachers, you know, they all love to tell you, Duke of Edinburgh, it's fun, it looks great on your CV, it's going to be a wonderful experience, but they lied. They trick you into believing all of these wonderful things because all I remember is me and six or seven of my girlfriends from my year in school, I went to an all-girls school, and we got delivered in a minibus to the middle of the English countryside, cold, wet, backpacks as big as us, with a map, a compass, and little directions of a location that we were supposed to get to. I think from memory, it was about 15, 20 miles away. I was like, here you go, girls, go for your life, find your way to the campsite for this evening. And all I remember is being lost, 
miserable, hungry, because I ate my snacks in the first half an hour. And it was very funny because the girl who was in charge of the coordinates for where we were supposed to go to, she had misread and got a few degrees off. So instead of, let's say, being due north with a compass going 15 miles this way, we had gone a little bit off center and had started walking, thinking that the campsite is a few degrees this way. Now, if you are a little bit off course and you've walked for five minutes, that's okay because you probably see where you're supposed to go. But when you walk for hours and hours on end, 15 miles in a little bit of the wrong direction, you find yourself very far from where you're supposed to be. You are off track. You know, it's exactly the same for our lives. Sometimes we can just get a little bit off track, maybe in our thoughts, maybe in our attitudes, maybe in our habits or our convictions. And, you know, if it's just... For a little while, you can't maybe start to see the ramifications, but you go long enough in the wrong way, you see the trajectory take you to a place where you were never meant to be. And I'm believing for 2023 that we're going to be men and women of God who are going to stay on track with the plans and purposes that he has for us. I'm going to quickly pray, and then we're going to get into the text and really believe that God's going to speak to us. So Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are with your people. I thank you that as we look on on a clean slate and a new chapter of a new year. I thank you that you have already gone before us. You know what's ahead of us, Lord God. And I thank you that you are with us every step of the way. And so today I pray that you will just give us wisdom, that you'll open up our hearts for you to speak to us and to put us on the right track for all that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Men. Okay, so we are going to look at the story of Gideon together. And hopefully we're going to unpack five quick things for us that are going to help us from his story stay on track and really start out the year strong. So the first thing about Gideon, you can read the whole story because it's a pretty long one and it's in Judges, but let me just give you a little bit of a synopsis. Gideon was born into a time where, again, the people of God were under persecution. They were under the oppression of the Midianites. And it was a really terrible time. And the people of God were crying out for God to come and save them. And so Gideon, during this time, he really felt like, what is going on, God? And so the first point that I want to make when it comes to staying on track and something that Gideon had to learn is that, first of all, we need to remember we are part of God's plan. We're part of his plan because Gideon, he's looking around at the chaos and the mess and, you know, the hopelessness of the situation, his situation, but also of the people of God. And he has a little whinge to God in Judges 6 verse 13. This is what he says. Please, my Lord, if the, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, did the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hands of Midian. In essence, Gideon, he's saying, hey, God, I know, I've heard from my fathers. I've heard from the people of old, the amazing things you did. You split oceans, you fed your people, you brought them into the promised land, you did all these wonderful things. But God, what, what are where are you now? Look at what has happened. We are under persecution. We are under oppression. And he starts to ask God, where are you in this situation? I wonder how often we look around our situations and circumstances. And maybe corporately as the world, there is a lot going on. Pandemics, wars, global and economic crisis. There is just a lot happening. And maybe we might be in the situation where we look back at like, God, we know you're the God of the impossible. We look back at times of revival and great moves of God, but like, where are you now in our 2023? And this is the place that Gideon found himself. And I love as he starts to ask God, where are you? This this God of the impossible, this is how God answers him. In Judges 6, 14, it says, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands. Am I not sending you? Am I not sending you? You see here, God is telling Gideon that all the worries and woes that you have and all the situations and circumstances you have, you are part of the answer. You are part of the solution to your own prayers and concerns. You know, I love that God, and I don't know why, because we're human and we mess up and make mistakes, but he always, if you look throughout scripture, if you look through great revivals, any big moves of God, he always involves humanity. He involves people in what he is doing. 
And so I just want to remind us as we embark on 2023 that we might look at our situations corporately or maybe individually, finances, situations, relationships, and start to be like, God, where are you? I need your help in this. How are you going to come and intervene? And God's saying, hey, am I not sending you? You are part of the solution. You are part of the plan. Just imagine if the church, the people of God, all understood that God wants to work in and through us to bring his salvation, to bring his grace and truth and miracle breakthroughs in this time. So I just want to say the little recalibration, getting back on track. Let's make sure that we remember that God has a plan and we are part of it. The second thing about Gideon's story is that we need to believe God's word above what we see. You see, it can sound exciting. Yay, we're part of God's plan. How awesome. But if you're anything like me, you know your own limitations. I know my own <laughs> insecurities and all the things that where I have shortcomings. And it's easy to go, yeah, yeah, I'm part of God's plan. That sounds great. But what difference can I actually make? Like legit, what difference can we actually make looking at everything around us and maybe the impossible situations that sometimes we stand in? We can start to think, God, yeah, awesome. You want to use me, but like, what can I actually do? The thing I love about God, and he constantly shows us through scripture, is he never sees us how we see ourselves. He sees the entire picture. And when he looks at us, he doesn't see us now. He sees us as he created us with all the purpose, all the potential, this perfect vessel that he knows that if we would allow him to, he can use for his plans and purposes and do more than we can ask, think, or imagine. And so this is the tension that Gideon finds himself in because this tension of who he sees himself to be who he knows, his failure, failures and shortcomings, but then this idea of who God's calling him to be. In fact, when the angel of the Lord comes and says, you have a part to play, this is, this is what the angel says in Judges 6, 12. It says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. In fact, another translation says, mighty man of valor. Whereas Gideon, <laughs> when he hears this, he's like, me, a mighty man of valor, a warrior? No, no, you, you've got the wrong guy. Because in verse 15, he says, um, pardon me, Lord, uh, but I, how can I save Israel? Because my clan or tribe is the weakest and I am the least of my family. He's basically saying, I'm the least of the least. Like, you've got the wrong guy. I can't do this. But there had to be a moment in Gideon's story where he actually understood this tension between who he believed himself to be and who God was calling him to be and choosing to have faith in what God's word was for him rather than what he saw. You know, this is definitely part of my journey. I've shared it a little bit before, but I was the girl who used to hide in connect group behind Tim in case they asked me to pray or read out a scripture. I remember the first time I was supposed to preach, I did not show up because I had a panic attack and couldn't do it. I remember being asked to just share simply my testimony on a Sunday and I ran and hid in the bathroom so they couldn't get me up. This is the reality of my life. And so to see me doing this today is miraculous. It is truly miraculous, but there had to be a part of my journey when I had to stop believing in my own insecurities and the, the constraints that I thought I had on my life and choose to believe, okay, God, if this is what you're calling me to, if this is your plans and purposes, I'm surrendering to that and I'm going to believe and have faith in what you've called me to. You see, the enemy, he would love to keep us constrained and constricted and bound up to not being having the faith to step out into the God adventure that he is calling us to. And so I just want to ask, talking about recalibrating some things, you know, those few degrees of separation from being on track to maybe getting off track a little bit. But maybe what are some of the things that you believe about yourself? Some of the things that you maybe are fearful of or have insecurities in or uh, lack confidence or just think, I, I couldn't do that. Maybe it's time to actually get out the word of God, get into prayer and go, God, what do you say? Because I'm going to believe your word and start to step out in faith because it changes everything. The third thing about this story, if we're going to stay on track, is we need to hold our position. Gideon, when he finally gets the revelation that he is called, that God is with him, that it's going to be okay, him and 300 soldiers go and encircle the enemy camp. And there they are in Judges 7 verse 21. And it says this, it says, while each man held his position around the camp, 
And then it goes on to talk about the incredible victory that they had. But I love this thought that every single one of those men, they had an assigned position. And it was important that day that every single person turned up. You know, if they hadn't have shown up and, you know, odd people had been missing, there would have been gaps within the formation that was needed to have victory. And, you know, God has actually assigned us specific places and positions in 2023. Maybe where you are right now is not necessarily where you want to end up. But you have a place right now, whether it be in your relationships, in your family, with your spouse and your kids, with your work, with your university, sphere of influence, the industry you might find yourself in. There's so many different things that we all hold, places that we find ourselves in, places that we're called to be good stewards of. And you know, these places, God has given us this assignment to make sure that we are actually taking hold of them because he has purposes in our placement. There is things that he wants for us to be able to do and to bring his light, to bring his truth. And so I wonder if we're showing up. I wonder if we're holding the positions. Maybe some of the positions we find easy to you know, be there and it's great. Maybe work is awesome. We're loving it. It's fulfilling us. But maybe the position within our family, with our spouse and our kids, we're maybe a little bit absent. Maybe we find it easy to be in the position with our friendships and the community that we're building and we have lots of great fun and building those, but maybe our family is a little dysfunctional. Maybe there's some pain there and it's easy to abdicate that position and spend time there being a good steward of that. I wonder today, recalibrating some things, getting back on track, what is it that God has placed in your life holistically? Are there areas that we need to concentrate on this year and say, God, I'm showing up? Because it's not just about holding our position, it also matters how we show up. It matters how we are in that place. In Malachi 1 verse 6, God, he actually comes to the people and he's like, hey, I have an offense with you. Because they have been bringing sacrifices. And if you know about the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, they were to bring lambs that are the first, the valued, the prize, the first ones. But they were bringing lame, deaf, blind, the blemished, Just kind of the offshoots, the the ones that no one cared about. And it was like, we're doing the sacrifice thing, but really their hearts weren't in it. And God was like, I'd rather you not bring a sacrifice than you give me the least, the worst, the offcuts. And he's like, you know, I am God. If you want to honor me, if you want to actually live a life of of building sacrifice into it as as a sign of worship, then bring your best. Because God, it says in the Bible, he doesn't look at appearances. What does he look at? He looks at the heart. And so I wonder when it comes to us showing up in all the different avenues and areas of life, are we bringing God our best? Because in Colossians 3 verse 23, it says this, work willingly at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. And so today as we're just maybe a few degrees off, what are some of the areas, come on, we need to keep showing up in? What are the areas that maybe we aren't giving our best? And you know, best isn't perfection. Sometimes when we have a lot of things going on, sometimes best is barely making it, but we showed up and that was the best. But that we ultimately remember that everything we do is for the glory of God and we're honoring him with our whole life. Number four, I hope you're still with me. Staying on track, the fourth thing we learn from Gideon's story is that we need to use our voice wisely. Part of the winning strategy for them overcoming the enemy was what they spoke and declared. Judges 7 verse 20, it says, they held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horn in their right hands, and they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They gave a shout, and what came out of their mouths was integral to their victory. Now, I know this scripture, Proverbs 18, verse 21, the tongue has the power of life and death. It can kind of become one of those Christian cliches, but I'm looking straight down the screen because I want you to get this. Our words are powerful. They truly are powerful. And I wonder as we're starting the year, if maybe we can do a little bit of a stop take, even just for this next week. Start to listen to yourself. What is your confession? What is coming out of your mouth? Are your words cynical? Are they hopeless? Are they angry? Are they bitter? Are they fearful? I wonder what is, what narrative are your words building? Are they bringing life to your situations? Are they building things up or are they tearing things down? Because our words, the Bible constantly tells us they are powerful and actually 
Where do our words come from? It's out of the overflow of our heart that the mouth speaks. And so what our words are saying ultimately shows and reveals how our heart's going. And so if our hearts maybe are a little bit fearful, maybe they're jaded, maybe they have got cynical, maybe they've got hardened, then our words are going to reveal that. And I truly believe that as we start to be intentional with our words and to start to speak in faith, to speak in hope, you know, the world has so many negative words over us at the moment. I do not want the world to frame my 2023. I want God and his word and his faithfulness and his goodness and his mercy and his purposes to frame my year. And so therefore I need to speak it and declare it and to speak life into it. And you know, the thing about our words is, yes, it changes our lives. It can, even if you start to speak in a certain way, it can start to change your spirit, start to change your attitude. But it also starts to change the environment around you and the people around you. I remember when I first moved here about 18 months ago. If I'm honest, it was incredibly overwhelming. I just moved my whole family. I was trying to navigate getting kids into school, buying school uniforms, finding the new area I was, where do I get groceries, my kid needs to go to the doctor, how do I even get to a doctor? I got a puppy in the first week, I was sleep deprived, I was sleeping next to its cage. I mean, I do not understand why I and the whole family had to do this. I was just doing everything when it came to work, learning everyone's names, doing filming, doing all of this stuff, and I was very, very overwhelmed. I think I cried every day and just felt like a failure, like, what am I doing here? <laughs> How is this gonna happen? And I remember during that time, I think it was God just helping people speak life into me. I would get messages or phone calls, just building me up, encouraging me, saying, you've got this, it's gonna be okay. And I promise you, it changed everything. It gave me the courage to keep walking. It put wind in my sails. You know, our words, they have power, not just for our lives, but we can change others' worlds and speak God's voice, speak his encouragement into people. So again, if we're gonna stay on track, let's just look. Have we got a little few degrees off when it comes to what's coming out of our mouth? Because our words can bring, be so powerful and give us victory in what we have ahead of us. And lastly, as we are about to close, the last thing when it comes to Gideon's story is that if we're to stay on track, we need to use the right weapons. You see, Gideon and these 300 men, as they encircled the enemy, if you know the story, the enemy numbered 120,000. That is 450 enemy to one Israelite soldier. That is a pretty bad odds. And if I was going up against 450, I'm gonna need some pretty awesome weapons because there seems to be completely outmatched and outnumbered. But look at the weapons that God gave them to use. Judges 7, 16 says, dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in their hands of all of them with torches inside. Torches, jars, and trumpets. I'm sorry, 450 people against trumpets, jars, and torches. I'm like, you have to look at that and think, God, what are you thinking? But ultimately, God knew what they needed for what was ahead. And they came around and surrounded the 120,000 enemy, and they broke these jars, and the light expelled out. They sounded the trumpet. They released this mighty war cry. And it was because the light spelled out that if you read the story, it caused so much chaos within the enemy camp that there was ultimately a victory. But you know this, this jar of clay, which seems like a crazy weapon to take into battle, it has two significance that I think is important and pertinent for us today. Firstly, it wasn't about its composition, how it was made up, what it looked like, how strong it was, or how ornate it looked. It wasn't about its composition, it was about its content, what it held within it, the light within it that ultimately enabled it to win the battle. It wasn't, number two, it wasn't whether it was strong and durable. Actually, its weakness was super important because if it was so strong, it would not have been able to be broken to reveal the light that was within it. It would have been concealed and hidden. And ultimately, through its weakness, the light was able to shine. You know, this is exactly the same as our lives. The Bible uses the analogy that us, humans, God's people, we're just vessels. We're these beautiful vessels, and it says it beautifully in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, but we have this treasure 
in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We're vessels with the Spirit of God, His light, His power, His enablement within us. We're just the vessel, but He is the power. And it's about greater is He that's in us than he that's in the world. And so, again, making sure that we're on track, let's not go into this year making, you know, sometimes we can, our own plans and all of our greatest ideas and using our wisdom like, okay, this is how we're going to tackle 2023 and forget to involve God in those plans because it's not about us, the vessel. It's about what we carry within us, his strength, his power, his ideas, his wisdom that ultimately when we accept that we don't have it all together, when we accept that we do have weaknesses, that we are a little bit broken, it's through those cracks in our lives that His light can shine through. It says it this way in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, His grace is sufficient for you. God's speaking, He says, For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I can boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, my insecurities, all the things I do wrong, because that's when Christ's power rests on me. That we would understand that we don't have it all together and it's gonna be okay, and we don't have all the answers to what lies ahead of us, but God does. And as we just come to Him saying, God, would you fill me? It's not about myself, it's about what I carry and I carry your grace, and I carry your power, and I ask you to enable me and equip me, that we would go into this year knowing that we have a God who is for and with us, and if he is for and with us, I say it all the time, then what can stand against us? And let's believe that God is gonna have his way in our hearts and in our lives this year, amen? So just before we close this service, I wanna give every single person the opportunity to come into a relationship with this incredible God I've been speaking about. You know, this analogy of being a vessel and that ultimately the Spirit of God can come upon us and enable us and equip us in our lives. We were never called to do life alone. And yes, there is this disconnect and distance between us and God because of our sin and mess and mistakes. But that is the incredible grace message that Jesus died for us, He paid the price. So all we have to do is come to Him with faith that He has done everything and accept Jesus as Lord of our lives. And He comes in and He helps us on the journey and we never have to do it alone. And so if you know right now that maybe you are disconnected from God, maybe you do not have a current personal relationship with Him, it might be your first time that you're praying a prayer like we're gonna pray in a moment. Maybe at the start of the year you're like, okay, I, I have drifted from God. Maybe you've got a little bit off track, but it's time to get things back, stay on the right track with Him. I would just love to be able to pray this prayer. And if you pray it with faith, I know it's gonna be an eternity changing prayer. So pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I want to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ every single day for the rest of my life. I ask that you would come in, forgive me of my sin, wipe the slate clean. I thank you that you love me, that I don't have to do this life alone, that you're with me. So I give you my life today in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, maybe you've just made that decision uh, wherever you find yourself and you're thinking, what do I do next? Well, a QR code is going to arrive somewhere on this screen. If you scan that, uh, fill out a form, a pastor from our community, someone amazingly like Pete is going to get in touch with you and try and get you connected into our community. As we said earlier, churches are open all around the UK. So maybe have a look online to see what uh, the nearest community is to you. Uh, and hopefully maybe see you next Sunday. But let's just pray as you go in this week and maybe God spoke something to you in this uh, time together. Maybe there was something awakened in you or something's resting in your mind. Hopefully this will help transform your week. Uh, It's not just something for today, it's something for the next days ahead and hopefully weeks and months. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that no matter if we are just behind the screen that your spirit can move in all spaces, Father. I pray for everybody's week. I pray that in the stillness, Father, that they're able to know that they are truly loved, embraced by you. And no matter what people are facing, Father, that they know that you are with them and that they are truly, truly held in your arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you soon, friends. Blessings on blessings. Blessings.